Lots of questions coming up again about which metal to buy, gold or silver. And we already know which one I prefer, but that doesn't say much except which one I think makes more sense for my specific case. So if you're wondering for yourself, we need to take an objective look and I can help with that. I can do objective. So which is better? Gold or silver, we'll just jump right in. Now this is one of those topics, it's very rare out in the world, but it's very common around here. Very few people are gonna pit the two metals against each other, trying to decide which one to buy, one over the other. But all of those very few people just happen to hang out around here on YouTube. So we're gonna cover it. There are pros and cons to both, and I think they both have their own lanes. I don't think they crowd each other, but to really look at this, we have to set biases aside. Maybe just look only at historical performance to start and then get into some of the practical reasons you might buy one or the other. That historical performance, it's really the only way to give us a clear idea of which metal performed better over certain time frames. We just always have to remember here that that's gonna change depending on what time frame we look at. So people can pick time frames to suit whatever story they're trying to tell, and they do. Now, I try to keep a little bit of a wider lens, so we're going to start off, we're going to go back to 1971, that's when gold was decoupled from the dollar, and if we looked at those charts, we'd see that gold has had an annual rate of return of about 7.7%, while silver's annual rate of return in that same window has been 4.8%. So gold's outperforming silver in that 50-year, 50 50-year-ish 50 time frame, and if we were to go back further, we can do that. We can go back to 1925. I see those charts too. It's pretty similar, but there are a lot of reasons why that data just doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, gold was pegged to the dollar. You couldn't buy gold on the retail market. There are a lot of things that just makes that time frame not really relevant. Usually when someone picks that time frame, they're trying to show that the S&P has outperformed metals, and that's a case that I'm definitely not going to pick the other side of. It's true. Now, if we want to narrow this down a little bit, look only at this century, well, gold's annual rate of return since January of 2000 is about 8.7%. Same time frame for silver. Silver is about 6.7%. So again, gold's a little bit ahead. That's just over 20 years. If we want to narrow that down to, say, 10 years, well, that's a, a bad time frame to use. We all know what happened in 2011 that hung out until early 2013. So we're looking at the first part of 2013. And in that case, gold's annual rate of return since then, since well, since January of 2013, is about 1.8%. Silver, it's actually negative 3%. So bad time frame for silver. I give that about six months when silver started to go down in 2013. That comparison will definitely start to look better. But again, it's not a great period of time for either metal. Uh, to be clear, we can find time frames that make silver look like it's outperformed gold, but it's very misleading to show that data. It is possible, just like it's possible to show that gold has outperformed the S&P. We can look at 2022 to see that, or we can pick a specific window beginning just prior to the dot-com crash, that would have been in 2000, and then ending during the more recent market crash. That, again, it's going to make it look like gold outperformed the markets, but it's misleading. Really, we need to use rolling windows of time or just a really long period of time. We'll see in those cases that gold has outperformed silver. And if we did go all the way back to 1925, I've already mentioned that, but gold's compound annual return since then is 4.9%. Silver is 3.5%. Inflation, by the way, is 2.9%. And the S&P has been about 10.3%. So yes, both metals have stayed ahead of inflation. No, neither have done it by much, and the S&P has significantly outperformed all three. So a 95-year historical performance chart, it's not really going to make sense, but if anyone's telling you that precious metals don't beat inflation, well, they're just wrong. A 20-year chart, that might make a little bit more sense, and a 10-year chart, well, it might make sense too, but again, all of these comparisons will still only show how the two compare inside those windows. So gold has clearly outperformed silver over the long run, but there are still windows inside that, windows in time where silver can be made to look better. Now, I would say that comparing the two on annual rate of return still doesn't make much sense, particularly because neither one makes a good investment asset. If you're looking at the average rate of return, it's only going to seem positive if we're comparing them to cash, which 
is fair. That's what I do, but it's not going to look good if we're comparing them to other asset classes using reasonable time frames. They're here to offset the bad times for other assets, not to replace them, at least not if you're looking for growth. So that brings us to some of the more practical comparisons. Unit price, acquisition cost, those would be at the top of the list for me. Storage considerations are out there, it's something to consider. And then the logistics of selling, that would be up there too for me. Those can all be qualified, but beyond that, really all we have is future opportunity. And that's something that cannot be qualified in any logical way. We're talking about hopes and dreams. We're talking about somebody's opinions, what somebody else might think will happen. And the only thing that I can really say there that is objective is that people have been telling us what they think will happen with both metals, really, as long as I've been paying attention. And in the 15 years that I've been playing along, well, anyone saying that the metals are going to break out of the patterns that we've been seeing, well, they've been wrong. So to me, the primary consideration for deciding what to buy starts with how much you want to spend, and then it ends with how you intend to use them. If you want to spend, say, $200 or less a month, well, silver has an obvious advantage. It has a much lower unit cost, $23 per ounce. That's a lot lower than $1,970 per ounce. If you want to spend, say, $500 or more, well, gold has a much lower premium. It also takes up a lot less space. So now the advantage goes to gold. In between those two numbers, $200 and $500, well, I think it's a harder thing to come up with. I think it has to be about other things. So on the back side, the sale side, the use side, if you think you might want smaller increments for small needs, $25 needs, well, silver is your obvious go-to. If you're trying to cover large needs only, $2,000 or more at a time, well, it's gold. And I think that it's as simple as that. And that's why I think that it doesn't make sense to say that you should only buy one metal or the other because probably everybody has a potential use case in both categories. Now, that doesn't mean that you need both. We're going to come back to that in a minute. As for silver being poised to outperform gold, we sure hear that a lot around here. Well, I can't see into the future, so who knows? But we can see into the past. We can see that gold is the stronger performance. Now, some might say that lagging past performance means that silver is due for a run, maybe because it's currently nowhere near its all-time high, and well, that means it has more room to climb. Again, who knows? Anything's possible. Now, I've never thought of physical precious metals as growth investments. I expect them to appreciate, but I don't see them the way that I see other investments. So anytime that I hear a silver bug say to buy silver rather than gold because it has more potential, I can't get past the idea that misery loves company. Anyone telling you about silver's potential, they are looking at it as a growth investment, at least to some extent, and it just has not performed like that over time. I don't think that's the right approach. We also hear it from people who sell silver, but we're not going to get into that. Now, if a person is telling you to buy silver because you need it for trades, you need to buy your bread in a bad fantasy future, well, that's something else. That's wanting alternative assets for small needs. And regardless of whether a future like that will ever materialize, that's simply about practical planning. You just need to determine if you think that there's a probable need for that. If your primary goal here is to protect long-term wealth, well, I think that you're on a better track with precious metals. If that's your primary use case, it really comes down to how much you wanna spend at a time. You wanna spend a little, you don't mind a higher premium for that convenience, you go with silver. If you want the tier one asset that's more recognizable as a store of wealth, you go with gold. And if I sound like I'm showing a bias there by saying it like that, well, it isn't a bias, it's just a preference, and that's based on what I'm trying to do personally. Now, I'd be suspicious, though, of anyone telling you that you can't do both. Personally, I don't think that. They're different tools for different jobs, more than it's different strokes for different folks. Now, I, I said I would come back to silver, maybe needing both. I have a small amount of silver. I think that that covers that potential emergency need, but I also have cash, and I think that that's an easier way to cover small needs. I have other things I could trade if it came to it, so really, I just don't want to pay the current premiums for silver. Now, if that changes in the future, I'll probably buy silver again too. Now, if you're looking at the two and you're just wondering which has more potential, well, really that's up to you. Your guess is as good as anyone's. I know of plenty of opinions but I don't know of any facts that show that one is gonna break out relative to the other. It makes more sense to go with the one that fits any relevant situation to you. If that means one, it means the other, maybe it means both, that's your answer. Now, if you're coming here for an opinion, well, 
should be pretty clear which one I buy. I haven't been excited about silver since maybe 2014. I am focused primarily on gold, but it's not about some kind of bias. It's just about my own personal use cases. Everybody has a different situation, so hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you think, which one's best for you. Maybe it's both. Let us know. And then while you're there, be sure to hit the like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.